Hi everyone, I'm Jenny from Jenny's Crown Collection. I'm here with Zebra today, and we are gonna be going over uh, color palettes for the mild liners. Uh, first off, I wanna hear where you guys are from and what you guys use mild liners for currently. So do you use them for planning? Do you use them for coloring? Do you use them for cards? What do you use them for? And say where you're from. Cool. And just put that in the chat. So I see we have Long Island here. I'm from upstate New York. We've got Arizona, journaling, school and planning, Bible journaling. We got a planning. You haven't used them yet? Well, you'll know how to use them today. So <laughs> Megan, after we go through all these uh, bullet journals, California, you use them for, oh, it's going a little faster, Instagram, Colorado. So we got all sorts of uh, ideas here. You use them for cards. So some of the things we do today, we're not going to do cards specifically, but you can use some of the items that we're going to be do today for cards. So we've got Alabama. So everybody, welcome. It's so good to have you here. I am going to share my screen real fast. And let's see, we're going to. All right. So I can't see the chat anymore. Let me just get it. Oh, it's in the middle. So if there's any questions, um, Zebra is here to answer them. So they will answer any questions that you guys have from the chat. So we're gonna start going over basic color theory because this is a color palettes class. So right here, we have the summer palette. So you guys can download these. It's in the chat also if you don't have it, but uh, this is available and you, it will be in your class materials or it's on zebra.com. Uh, and right here, we have a color wheel. So this is a basic color wheel. We're gonna describe some of the color wheel fast because this is how you came up with the color combination. And what happens is we will have all these color combinations, but there's even more ways to put these together, believe it or not. We have over 130 today, but there's gonna be even more. So this is our color wheel. We have our basic colors in the middle, red, blue, and yellow. And then we have our tertiary colors and uh, then secondary colors and then our tertiary colors right here. So uh, every color, if you look at this, these are very saturated right here. You're gonna have less saturated colors, which uh, if we go to here, we see some less saturated colors right here and this one is more saturated. And then we have value. So it's the lightness of a color. And what you can do, let's go over to uh, this right here. This is our blending chart. This. We are not going to do this today, but this shows all the different combinations that you can get with Zebra Mild Liners. Not only can you get the 35 colors they're available in, you can combine them to come up with new colors, which I really love to do, and they do it really well. Some other uh, markers don't do it as well, but Zebra Mild Liners do it really well. Like this fuchsia and red right here is one of my favorites. Uh, like a lot of the fuchsia colors are really pretty. Uh, the gray ones, you don't get as much variation, but a lot of these lighter colors, you're gonna get a lot of variation. So right here along this line, and you would have gotten this in your, uh, in the download, you'll see all, this is the color by itself. You can also dull, double the color up and you will get an even more saturated color. So those are just little things that you can do with the mild liners to get different colors. And then you can use some gradients. I'm going to show you this real fast. This is one of the examples that we could uh, make today. But so I did this. This is one of the color palettes I used. And you can see how we have this gradient right here. And then we have this gradient over here in the ocean. You can do those with the mild liners because they're they just work really well together to do that way. You can also, when they're, before they dry, you can put a little bit of water on them too, and you'll get that variation. So if we go back to our color chart. So how we put colors together are, th these are the three basic colors right here. And then we have our three other colors. So you could just do a combination of these three colors. These are called analogous colors right here on the side. So they're all by each other on the color wheel. So anytime you use three or four, or even this side of the color wheel, you're gonna have a good color combination or this side of the color wheel, or even doing all of them as a rainbow. One of the things you wanna look out for is if you're doing that, you can intentionally do some that are more saturated and you can do some that are less saturated. But for the most part, you wanna stick with the same saturation unless you're intentionally using a lighter color or you can use some for shading. So you could use two different colors like this one color and then a lighter color. 
So another thing you can do, uh, we have, these are warm colors right here on this side of the color wheel, and these are cool colors. And so zebra actually this year now has two grays. So when you're shading with zebra hut on mild liners, you'll have this cool gray right here that you can use for your cool colors on this side. And then your warm colors, you can use the regular gray. And that's just kind of a little trick that I learned um, when I'm doing my shading is I try to do these ones with the cool gray because then it, these ones with the cool gray because then it just looks, it just pops out like that. And then we have our complementary colors. So they're opposite each other on the color wheel. So you'll have like purple and yellow, red and green, blue and orange. And then you'll have even if you go like this, all of those are complementary. What you can do is you can use like these two colors with one of these colors, and that will give you a cool combination. Uh, the next one is, let's see, tetrads are two sets of complementary colors. So you could have these two with these two. Oh, actually these two with these two, and that would look really cool when you're uh, doing stuff. Also, you can do monochromatic, and that would mostly be with the grays. So you can really achieve this. If you use a gray on here, you can get some monochromatic tones, and especially when you get the grays, the dark grays and the cool grays, or you just use uh, some of the greens, some of the yellows, some of the oranges. You can get the monochromatic scheme right there. So let's go to, and I am going to actually stop the share for a minute so I can see uh, what if you don't have all 35 colors uh, someone asked. This is something that you can do that's really cool because you can create so many different colors with these. I only used four colors. This is, let me get it back on here. I only used four colors for this right here. And I had the pink, I didn't have an orange, I had the yellow, I didn't have a green, I had the blue and the purple. You could also get away with only using the, the purple right here. Are the colors labeled on the mild liners? I can't see any, so how will I know if I'm filling out the chart? That is a great question because some supplies do not have the colors on it. So it's, this one's not a good example. I've used that one a lot. That's one of my favorite ones. So this one right here, let's see if we can get that in zoomed. Right here, you're going to have the color name right here. It's, it's small, so you could always write it larger over here if you want, but the color name is actually on the marker. But that is a very good question because, yes, if you're doing something you want to have the right colors, then if it's not on there, it makes it a lot difficult. So I'm going to show you the colors I used for this one. I, I like the violet better that they have than the violet I make on my own, but I could actually do this right here with just these three colors. Sorry, these three colors. So you can do, you can have like a rainbow with just these three colors and you can get these at Michael's. You can go in there and just pick up them by themselves. What if some of my color names on the markers are in Japanese? Help. Uh, that would be a question for Zebra. I don't know if they have a translator on their website somewhere. Uh, she's going to see uh, if she can get that for you. But so these are the three colors I used here. You're as in Japanese as well. A lot of phones. Okay. Danny says a lot of phones can translate text using the camera. So try that. That would be a great idea. So those are the three colors I used for this. Let's now I want you guys to vote. I don't know if we're going to be able to get to all of the charts today, but I have them already filled out for you. So that way you can see what they look like. I'm going to change this camera again and see. Actually, I'll just keep it like this so I can see the chat. Um, but I want you guys to vote which one you want to do first. And then I'm going to have you guys vote on something else. So we have blues and greens, winter summer, and these are loosely based. So even though it says uh, spring, you could use some of these for summer planning, spring. I think everybody wants spring. So everyone, if you have your spring chart, get your spring chart out. Okay, so here's our spring chart. Everybody wants spring. I love the spring chart. It's very, very pretty. And you'll notice when we do this, I'm gonna have it to the side. 
Um, you'll notice when we do this that like some charts use, like this one is dominantly using certain colors and you don't use other colors. And then on some of them, you won't use some of these colors again. It's just interesting how that goes. Okay, so my question for you is, how do you guys wanna fill this out for you that are filling it out? Do you wanna do it row by row? Or do you want to find all the pinks and then fill it in that way? This is this completed spring chart right here, Bobby. You wanna do find, ooh, we've got one vote for row by row, two votes for row by row, find all the color. Finding all one color at a time is quicker. Yes, and then rather than uncapping pen a million times. Yes, and I think it'll help so they don't. So let's see, let's go with, we have two for row by rows. So let's go with that one for now. If anyone else votes differently, we'll go that. So I have all my mild liners. You want the paper link? Okay, so Kay said on the Japanese pens, the very bottom row, there's English text that starts with WKT7 followed by letters. That's how you will know what the color is. I should have I should have had that in there, right? So we are gonna pull out, these are just the colors. I'm gonna set them down right here. And I kind of have these memorized because I've been doing a lot. So this one actually first is kind of a blending one that we talked about that I showed you in that book. So we're gonna show the difference between using violet and using their violet. I actually like their violet better than the combination. So that's why I use this one, but you can also just use pink and blue and you can pick these up at Michael's by themselves. So we're actually gonna probably fill out these three together first. So if you have this chart, get it out and we'll get going on this one. All right, so we're just gonna, so what you're gonna do is just bring it across. It doesn't have to be perfect because all we're doing is this is a, as a reference. So if you, want to use this again. No one's going to look at it. No one's going to judge you. And then let's see. So now we have pink plus yellow. So when I do my combinations, I like to do them right away and not wait like an hour or five minutes in case the ink dries because I feel like it mixes better when you do it right away. So what right now I'm just going to do the pink and the yellow. And this one I use the orange instead to show you guys the difference between that one. All right, so you kind of just put it on top like that. And then I'm gonna show you guys the orange. So this is the orange that comes in the pack. And you can see it's just a tad difference in color. I don't know if it's coming across on the screen, but this one looks a tad redder. This one looks a little more yellow. Then we're gonna go with our yellow next. Share your screen to make it easier to see what I'm doing. Am I not sharing my screen? Can you can can everyone see the chart that I'm doing right now? Oh, you can. Let's see, I can do what I was doing before. I just can't read the chat. Let me see, let me try this again. All right, can you guys see that now? Okay, is that better? Okay, let me see if I can get the chat out. I'll just put it on the side somewhere. There we go. All right, I got the chat back out. Okay, perfect. All right, so now we're gonna come down here and go yellow, blue. So then we just come along here and you can see that green really popping out right there. And then we're gonna show what the blue green looks like. So, 
we actually we didn't put a green in there so i'm just gonna this is the citrus green we're gonna find where the citrus green goes i'm gonna show you guys what the citrus green looks like show the spring chart again now that the pick is clear oh, okay you want me to show you this again so here's the where can you get the chart so it's either on zebra or it's on michael's so this is the chart right here Okay, and then, so citrus green, I'm just gonna show you what that looks like. So if you look at this, uh, this one is obviously very different. So I like the green that I get better combining right there. And then blue right here. Okay, and then blues here. All right, and then this one is the pink plus blue, and you'll get you guys can tell me which one you like better. So that's the purple you get. And then this is the violet that you get that they give you. So I feel like I like this one a little better because this one uh, is just a little grainier for me. All right, so we're going to go onto this green over here. So now this one is analogous colors with a pink at the end. You will see as we go down. So summer green in here. Blue. And you can do this with the other side too. Cyan. And now this is when we throw in that color that's kind of on the other side of the. Well, it's next to blue. But not cool. So do you see how that just kind of pops out right there? You have all your analogous colors together and then you get your pink kind of popping out. So we go back to pink down here. I might just fill out the ones that I see the pink in the same line. So we can talk about them as we go. We got lemon yellow. So this one is uh, rainbow order one, two. but just with different colors. And you could create an orange out of these two also if you wanted one, like an orange, or you could just use the orange over here or a different orange. And we got coral pink coming up. So this is just a variation. And then we have gold. And we've got yellow. Green. Then a blue green here. And then gold over here. And then a fuchsia. I always get confused which one is which. So yeah, that's fuchsia. And then we got fuchsia here. And then an orange. gold. So these ones are all analogous. And then this one's kind of the rainbow order right there. And then let's we're going to pick out our cool gray. These are cool tones except for that pink. Cool gray. 
screen. Hit your screen. So again, these would just be opposite sides of the color wheel where did my paint go? But they work together and they're fun. Okay. Next we have citrus green. So similar to this one, but a little bit different. Green. Um, Mare, so some, you're saying how the colors are, do not have listed because they're in Japanese. I believe there's a link above somewhere that was showing. And then there was a way to tell, but unfortunately I did not prepare for that. Getting that right now. I do not understand what's happening. She's not blending or making colors. It seems to be Yes, we, this is, we're doing blending and we're also doing a color of charts that go together. So we're doing both of them at the same time. Let's see, and then pink. And then fuchsia. So up here, we combine some of the colors to make some different colors. We did some color mixing up there, color blending. And we have that blending chart. And then we have the fuchsia. So right here, we have these two colors that were complementary to each other, but then we added, and we just had one that was opposite side. And now these two, we have, they're on the same side of the color spectrum. And then we add two more. And then we've got pink up here. Fuchsia, and these are all, analogous colors right here. Then we have magenta. Okay, so to, was that a question, Trish? To make the light lime green, as an example, do you add the lighter yellow or the darker color first on the paper? That is a very good question. Let's come over here and answer that real fast. I have found that it doesn't make that big of a deal for me, but we can definitely check it out. So if we come over here and we do light, light green, light, light green, lime green. I think it's actually, this is citrus green. So you're pro, okay, you want to make the green that I made up here. So we have the blue and the yellow. Sorry, I'm understanding now. Where did I put the yellow? Here it is, okay. So we're gonna try this. We're putting the blue down first, okay. And then we're going to see if it makes a difference. For me, it doesn't seem to make that big of a difference. I, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys think it made a difference if you put one color down first over the other? Let me know what you guys think. Let's see. So. On this chart, very similar, seems the same. This chart when we is was one we talked about at the beginning. This is all the colors blended. The reason we put this line down the center is because this would be a duplicate of this side. But if you wanted to test this for yourself, you can do this side and say, I'm gonna put down this color first on this side, and then I'm gonna put down this color first on this side. So second sample looks a little bit lighter. Yeah, maybe. Actually, if anything, I like this one a little better because you can't see as much grain on that one. So there is something that could be said to that. How do I get the cool gray? The cool gray is available on Michael's also. It's part of the neutral set. This came out last year and it has these other colors that are in there olive, burnt, uh, copper, beige, and it has uh, which cream, I believe it is, which makes really cool combinations like on this last page right here. That was a very good question. Thank you that for that, Trish. All right, so let's get over here. We're going to go to cool gray.
are there a total of 30 colors available? On Michael's, there are a total of 30 colors available. On Zebra's, I actually have the other ones right here. Zebra Pen, you can get 35 colors, and these are the new gentle colors right now. Oh, you were actually using the gray mild liner. You know what? If you use the gray mild liner, it's not really that big of a deal. It's very subtle. Uh, you're going to be okay if you use the other one, but you, you're okay if you just use the gray. But the cool gray is if you just, if you have that one, you can use that one. And then we have blue green. And then you guys are probably ahead of me, right? <laughs> Who's already done with their chart? <laughs> Okay, smoke. Who did their chart before we got here today? That's what I wanted. Violet. So these ones are all by each other. And then we're going to get to some blending in here. So we've got pink, fuchsia, and magenta. And I love these color combinations. Some of these, when you combine, can't really tell, but some of them you can. So you got pink. You're catching up. <laughs> so and then I'm just going to put the pink on top of it. I mean, maybe there's something to be said, put the lighter color down first or the darker color down first. I don't know. Someone test it out. Okay, and then we put the fuchsia on top. So we get this really pretty color. It's very subtle. I, can, I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's a little pinker. You sign up without knowing why. What is the reason for this? Okay. Yes. So, Mayor, that's a very good question. Why would someone use a mild liner? Can we answer that for her in the chat, everybody? Can you tell them why you use a mild? Can you tell Mayor why you use a mild liner? Let's see. Let me get pink. Pink plus magenta. The dual tip, yes, the dual tip is amazing. Let me show that to you guys just real second, just real fast. So we get this other one, and then we got magenta plus fuchsia. Which is subtle, but you can really see that. It's, it's really good for a gradient. So we've got school and bullet journaling, crafting. Uh, I want to put something on top of that. Let me show you guys the tip card making. All right, so here's the tip. So we have this tip that you can, it is a little bit bigger than the clip art. Let me show you those real fast. So the click art is another one from Zebra. The colors, aren't exactly the same, but you can find the colors that look good together also. They don't have to be the same to look good together. So, so this one is a little bit thinner. Can you guys see that? So that's their click art and you can get these at Michael's also. And so this one's really good for drawing lines like that. And now let me show you guys the other one. The this, these are the brushes. There's a tin of various zebra pens at Costco also. Yes, there are. It's such a pretty artwork on that one. So this one is, oh, sorry, I'm doing this opposite of what I should be doing. So you can get those really good brush strokes with that. You're thin and thick. So there's a lot of different sizes. These ones don't come in the, they only come in 25 colors right now. I'm not sure in Japan if they come in more. So let's see, I'm just gonna look at the time real fast. What it does, oh, it shows me 1.30, okay. Sorry, guys. Let's get back to what we were doing over here. Good questions, 25 colors in the USA for the brush. So we have this, so you could use this as a really cool gradient uh, if you know what colors you like and going down. And I also like the coral pink with the fuchsia, which I didn't do on this chart, but 
Oh, it's down here. Let me show you guys that one real fast and get these brush ones out. So don't get confused. So we have this coral, coral pink plus fuchsia. We'll do that one real fast. Where did the fuchsia go? Oh, I put it over here. Okay. We got coral pink. How do you make the olive color? The olive color is a color um, that comes in the neutral set. So this is a color that you can create right here with coral pink and fuchsia. And let me just see if there's another coral pink on here so I could just put it in. Oh, do I not have another coral pink? Oh, all right, here it is. So this is coral pink without adding fuchsia. And you can see that difference right here. And then fuchsia, do we have this just on here? Yeah, fuchsia is right here. Just to show you guys the difference. So this one, you can really tell there's a difference between those three colors. The olive color, let me get this sheet out again, is part of the neutral set. You can get this at Michael's. And this one is looks like this. So this is, that one's olive. If you don't have the neutral set, that's a good question to come over here and see if we could make an olive color. So I see a yellow plus olive. Okay, that was not, anything in this row is not gonna work. Uh, you might be able to get with like a brown. So if you come over here and maybe add gray to yellow, uh, gray to the gray to uh, uh, if you add gray to the yellow, you might be able to get an olive color. Do you think Michaels will sell the neutral line open stock? That is a good question for uh, Zebra to yeah, answer. I'm not sure. So let me just see if we can make this olive color right here with the gray. Here's my gray. That's close. It's not quite olive, but it's close. Let's see, was there another one? Um, that was with cool gray. Trying to see if the brown, yellow plus violet, which is interesting. Let's try that one. Right now they don't have a multi stock. Can you show the color cyan? Yes, yes, I will get back there and we can do that. Let's see. That's very interesting. Look, I mean, it's almost the same as that one, but it's kind of olive. All right, let's see. So back to this one, someone wanted to see cyan. Well, I'll just put it on here for now, you guys. That one is cyan. really pretty. Okay. To get back to here, we are going to put violet on here and then our blue green. Alcohol, mark I don't think they are alcohol markers. I know they're, if you read the back, they're, ooh, mild and translucent in color. They are light fast so, and pigmented, so they'll dry, but they're not water-based. But Zebra would probably have better answer to the question as far as if they are, I know they're not alcohol, but I don't know the direct composition of them. They're not alcohol, they are water resistant, yes. And light fast. All right, so violet. You love mixing colors? Yes, my daughter, I taught my daughter um, color mixing in preschool and she tells me that all the time now. She's like, these two colors make this color. It's very fun and exciting. What set is the dark blue in for the second to last grouping? Oh, you want to know all the names? I have that somewhere, I don't have that on me. So 
Which set is the dark blue in? Blue. I don't have all the sets memorized. I just use, oh, was that the wrong one? No, it's not. And then blue green. The cool and refined pack, Danielle. And you can also get these open stock at Michael's. So if there's a color that really speaks to you on here, you can go and get them open stock at Michael's. Cool gray. Oh. Violet. And we have olive. If you were to color a flower and mix colors, would there be lines from coloring or would it blend? Okay, that's a good question. And I can answer it for you. We come here, I actually have, so I bought these stencils at Michael's because I don't know about you guys, but it can take me a while to draw something. And I like having stencils so I can just draw it right away. So we're gonna make a flower real fast for you. And these stencils, I have four stencils that I picked out that I thought would be good for summer, spring. And these are in the class description also. You can just get these on Michael's. I feel like they're not that much. So we color a flower, mix colors with Derby lines. When I am doing coloring with these, I like to use the brush. When mixing blending color, will it discolor the tip, especially for the lighter ones? It doesn't really discolor them, which is nice. And if it does, you just color out a little. We can do that real fast. But so let's, what colors do you guys want to mix out of these? Lighter colors are better. Do you guys want to do like, the, uh, if we go back to here and we look at these colors, do you guys want to do this coral pink plus fuchsia? Does that one sound good to you guys? Or is there another one up here that you guys want to do? Apricot. How do you make the cream color? The cream color also comes in the neutral set. So we have apricot. That one's not apricot. We have apricot and let's see what blue would look good with apricot. So if we come over here to this chart, we have a lot of options. I'm gonna go with fuchsia on that one. So like I said, if I'm coloring in, I like to use the brush because I can show you both ways. I feel like the brush makes it so you don't see the lines as much. So we're gonna try these two together. So you just come in like this. And it really depends on the type of paper you're using too. And what you could do to get that gradient is uh, do the pink up here kind of thing. I don't know if it's gonna look very good, let's see. And then you just bring it down a little bit. So you get that color down here. And then you just kind of while it's still wet, kind of bring it down a little bit. So then you can get, you see how that one looks like a little bit gradient and that one doesn't. But if we were gonna try these with this one, let's see, this is apricot and fuchsia, right? Okay. I feel like these ones are a little harder to color with. You can still do it. You just have to use the tip. I feel like the brush just takes a little bit less time. But there's also another option too. I'll show you guys in just a minute. You can use the bottom one. So just this bottom tip. So there's a lot of different ways you can get this color. I don't love this way as much because I feel like it tears the paper a little bit more. But you can do it that way. You just have to experiment with whatever paper that you have. So I hope that answers your question, Janet. Let's see. 
we'll get back to this. And then after this, I think we're gonna go through some of the spreads that I made with these color palettes. So after we get done with this chart, but you guys can do the other charts. Yes. If someone says black, what do you use? Okay, black, that's a good question. There were some that said black. There's a, a, a range of options to use with black. I just use the click art ones right here. And then you can just do this. They also have a brush pen that was in the description. And you can just fill it in like that. You can also use water with these ones too. But you just fill it in like that. So that way, because the gray that is in the set is not like black, black. The undertone is, I don't know, probably like red or something. So this one, you're getting the black, black, and this one is not. It's a gray, which is a great gray, but just not black. All right, next we have pink. All right, pink is down here. And these were, these pink, yellow, and blue are from what we did up here earlier. Okay, Danielle just put in what colors are in each pack. So if you wanna buy a specific pack because you like those colors, the thing is if you get the pack, you will be able to do lots of fun stuff with it. Because you can combine the colors. I just use this set over here to make some really cool colors. Right, let's see, lemon yellow. There wasn't a green in that one. Right. Then violet. Summer green. The clip guard pet. Yes, you don't need the stoppers on them. No, you don't. I don't know why. Did I put it back on there? I do sometimes out of habit. <laughs> I have are the neutrals in a brush pen, not at this moment. Can I, you, you wanna see the cyan again? Yes. Here is the cyan. Felicia, thanks so much for coming. Yes, I will discard the stoppers. That's what I need to do. Perfect. So I love this, this combination right here. This one is like, you could use it for spring for like, or you could use it for Easter, but it could be fun like summer colors too. Blue green is next. Let's see. And violet. And then we've got gold. And then we're going to use, even though, so we, if, if you're using this, we're going to use the cool gray on here, but you could use um, the other gray too with the gold. You finished the chart already? You, that's great. You're faster. <laughs> Cream. Where did I put those? Cream are over here. I think I have some other creams that I'm going to fill in. And cream is a little bit lighter. So what you can do is you can just double it up if you want. So that way, it, can you see the difference between those two? I like to double it up, but you can use it for a subtle one too. It's a really pretty color and it combines with colors. We'll do that one real fast. So we, let's do the pink plus the uh, coral pink and the cream plus the blue green real fast. So pink plus coral pink. I think this one's coral pink. Okay. And then we've got the blue green in here. And I'm gonna put the, we have the coral pink over here. So this one is just a little bit more orange than the other one. And then this is blue green. And then smoke blue. So this one's a little bit greener than this blue green with the cream in it. And smoke blue. So which chart are you going to go to next? All right, and then let's go over here. We got violet. I'm gonna just, I see a violet down here. 
got whole gray. And then I put the gray with this one. So we've, you, you'll be able to see the difference between the two grays right here. Are the charts simply to show? Yes, these charts are to show what colors are good together. And let's see what the time is at. It's about 146. So we're going to st actually stop doing this chart. I'm going to show you the other chart real fast. And I'm going to show you the examples because that's a really good question. Um, so these. I'm going to go through what you can do with all of these. And I didn't put in these blacks, but I'm going to show you real fast what you can do with that one. So you could come in really quick right here. And you can put in your black. And you, can you see how that just changes it a little bit? The other charts are going to be on Zebra or they're going to be on Michaels. So. Yes, a color spread. This is exactly why we're doing it. I'm going to show you that in just a minute. So this is like the fall colors. And like I said, this could be like a summer one too. So you don't, you don't have to use them just for this. Like this one could be summer also, but they could also be fall. This, these are very loosely based. Like down here, um, I, these were my Halloween type ones. This is blues and greens. So you can just say whatever you want to use it for. I like this one. It's kind of a beachy vibe right there. This one's winter. These are left over from, this line is left over from the fall, but all of these are the Christmassy ones. And then this is summer. And then this was the one we just did. We're gonna come over here and we are going to look at the spreads that I did. So I did a whole bunch of spreads with Janet. It was so good to have you. Okay. So we're going to come over here and we're going to look at the spreads that I did. So this was one of the spreads from, I believe, the spring chart. Nope, it was not. It was the fall chart. Okay, so if you look at this one, this is this spread right here. Oh, let me put this over a little bit so you guys can see. So this is with the grays and the two different colors. And then I used the, the yellow as a highlighter. I mean, uh, as like a shadow. And then you can see what I did. So next page, I put the pink in there, which I didn't love this, but I still like the pink with it. So I actually did another spread on this page. And this one has the pink that's more incorporated into it. So um, we've got these three different spreads. I probably, I don't know, it's between this one and this spread for me. And you can do all of these. I left the link below. This is just the stencil that I use. You guys could make the spread today if you got the stencil and you could put it in your chart, um, in your own bullet journal today. And then I did another spread also. This is with like the Beach Fives one, which was on this page. I believe, no, that one was on a different page. This is with this one. No, uh, this one must be a different one. It's on one of these pages somewhere. But anyway, this is with, I ended up actually mixing these colors because what happened is I started off with pink and then I added coral pink over here. And I was like, oh, oh, they're not the same. So then I just drew on top of each other. And I think it turned out okay. And then I didn't have the seagulls <laughs> and I drew them by hand, but it took me a long time. And that's why I'm like, Stencils are nice if you just want to have something quick and fast and you want to spend, you know, two hours on it. So this was this stencil right here. It has the little beach that you can put on there. And then this is just in the other, the, the other uh, color palette right here. So which one do you guys like better? I mean, they're both the same. They're just a little bit different. Do you guys have a preference? I'll call this one one or this one two. Two, this one. Yeah, and how I did this one, like I said before, is I just kind of combined the mild liners down here. You like both? I know they're everything's, I feel like it's all so pretty. 
And then I have a blank one that we can get to, but I also wanted to show you too. This is my planner. I'm not going to actually show you. I have, I use this one right here for my planner, but I feel like I have to change it because I've been doing times I need to go places in this color and then events in this one and then things I need to do in this color. But our week has gotten so busy and I have like 10 of these on a page and I'm like, which kid is where? The fourth one with the pink and the gray, yes. And you guys can make them today. Um, so that, that'd that be great. If you if you get the stencils, you can make them and use some of the color palettes that we've chosen that we have. So um, we have, anyway, I have these and I feel like I need to add more and have a differentiation for each kid. Cause I get, I'm like, who's where, when? And then my friend is picking up people and it just gets so confusing. But I did an example in a planner two examples and I used one of the palettes I think it was from the fall one in here so this is like everything red is what we're eating for the week so at a quick glance you can just see that we're eating something red we're not eating something red we're, this is what we're eating so uh it's in red and then this is the times I need to be places so you can quickly glance at your planner and see when you need to be places um, this is what I need to do. And then this is my exercise. So these are just, you know, it's an example of small things that you can do on an actual planner. And then I changed it up for this one. So everything I ate was in blue. And then I differentiated for every kid. So this is what I might actually end up doing. So red was like my son. This would be my daughter. This would be me. And then this would be my other daughter just for an example. So at a quick glance, you could see where everyone needs to be for the week and what you need to do. So that's just an example of what you can do with the color palettes. Um, and then also over here, you can make your notes look pretty. This is just uh, like a to-do list of what I do for my website. Well, modified. I put a bunch of <laughs> uh, mild liner stuff in there and then the zebra class down here. But I, like I said, I just used the four colors in here. But anyway, so that answer, hopefully that answers your question on what you can do with these color palettes. And I just wanted to open up and ask you guys, so we have one spot left in here um, to see if you guys want to make one of these really fast using the stencils. So I have, and which stencil you want to use. And then we'll pick the color palette. So we have beach. We have B and we have flowers. I don't have a flowers one yet, but is there one? We got one vote for flower. What else? Which one do you guys want? Flower. We got lots of flowers. Okay, we'll do flower. So we're going to come over here. You can use any black pen. I am losing everything. Okay. So we. We got one vote for two votes for beach, but lots of flowers. So we're going to use, now we have to figure out, do you guys want a spring, summer, fall palette? Which one do you guys want to use? Maybe the spring, the one we just did? Summer. Someone wants summer. Let's see. Summer. Summer. Okay. Let, now pick a palette that we're going to use with this one. So, um, I don't know how to describe this. Let's see, I like this one. Let's call this one one, two, or three. So down here's one, and then we got two, then we have three. Got one vote for one, so one's down here. One, okay, let's do one. We're gonna use lemon yellow. So we're gonna pull these out. I'm gonna use them in the brush, but you can, like I said, you can use this in whatever you guys want. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna write. So what month should we do May since it's coming up? I have this out, okay. Okay, so lemon yellow, blue green, violet, and if you have these already, you can make it with us. You just have to maybe put this in later. Let's see, fuchsia. Okay. 
pink fuchsias right here. Yes. Okay, so we've got our colors. They look pretty together. And we are going to write, I don't know what to write on it. Do you guys have any ideas? I know the month. So I'll start with the month and maybe write some things that we can write with flowers, maybe one or two words. So I am going to maybe do like this color, a blue green. Just bloom. Ooh, I like that. Okay, let's do that. Okay. So we're going to come over here and we're going to write May. So there's lots of different ways that you can uh, write this kind of stuff. Use. Uh, so this one's more block lettering. This one that I did back here was more like as a uh, cursive. Mayflower's good vibes. Let's do just bloom. Let's do that like in pink. So this one's more blog. Let's write just bloom right here. Just, and then we'll write bloom right here. I don't know how to do the fancy V. So we'll just pretend. B L O O. <laughs> What's really good about bullet journals is you can just follow the line. So I'm going to come over here. Now I have a mess. This is what my desk usually ends up looking like. I have the cool gray that I'm gonna come over here and I am going to outline this. So we just get those highlights on here. So you can always pull in gray, even if gray isn't on the sheet, you can always pull in the gray. All right, and then pull in the other grays over here. Actually, probably wish I would have just done that one, but that's okay. She just come in like this. Just give yourself the highlights. And then I'm just gonna do this here. And we are actually running out of time. So what you could do then is keep doing that so you can, you get it more. And I probably put in a little bit more so you can see this a little bit better. But then you would just come in with these flowers and you put the flowers wherever you want and you'd use those same colors. I'm having so much fun taking them into color. Thanks for doing this. Before, could someone tell me what the latest Miles Daniel set is called again? Yes, it is called the Gentle Colors. It's not available on Michaels as of yet, but hopefully later this year it will be. Um, but yes, it's Gentle Colors. But anyway, so you just put the flowers over here. So I hope you guys liked this class. Um, and go and check out these sheets and tag Zebra with Inspired by Zebra, if you do anything with this class today, so that way we can see it. Uh, let me turn this back on to stop the share. And I am going to go. Anyway, yes, thank you so much. And just tag Zebra on uh, Instagram or wherever you're at and let us know what you guys make. So, yeah, thank you.